What is going on, YouTube fam? This your boy Tony Two Times, and we back with another episode of the Baltimore Way, man. Y'all know what I need y'all to do. Be sure to like, comment, share the video if you're feeling the content. Tonight, man, we got a good story. We're going to talk about a person a lot of people don't know of, man. The real Omar from The Wire. Let's get right into it. Here comes Omar, yo. The Wire TV show painted Omar as a terror to all the hustlers. When he came around the corner, the whole block got out of there. A stick-up kid with a conscience. Kind of like a Robin Hood. Take from the people that's already up and give to the poor. Just like other characters in The Wire, the show portrayed a lot of real people, such as Marlo, Boxdale, and others. What a lot of people don't know, Omar is also based on a real individual as well. Donnie Andrews, who grew up on the west side of Baltimore. As a kid growing up, Donnie went through a lot at an early age. His mother was abusive, and in West Baltimore, you had to be tough. In the interview, Donnie recalls the night his life changed forever. His mother sent him and his little brother out to the laundromat at 2 a.m. in the morning when he saw a man getting beat by a group over 15 cents. Donnie decided right then and there he would never be a victim. In the streets, it's people that do and people that get it done to them. One of the biggest hustlers in the city at the time told Donnie, real men don't stand, real men stand alone. And that stuck in his head. Donnie decided he would be a stick up kid, saying he felt better working by himself. He had a few homies, but mostly he stood alone. Saying when you go rob somebody, it gotta be perfect. Donnie would be arrested for the first time at just age 16. But that didn't slow him down at all. More charges were followed as he was super active in the streets. He would sometimes hit a, a bar or a liquor store, but realizing he was only making like $200 or $300 and decided it was way more lucrative to rob and hustlers. His rep was notorious. Everybody knew he wasn't the one to play with. On one occasion, he had so much respect, he screamed up to the window, hey yo, if I got to come up there, it's going to be bad. So they just threw the product down to him out the window. As the 80s approached, Donnie would get caught up and use and smack himself. He was always so focused on his missions, but his drug use started to make his thoughts cloudy. And he soon graduated to murder for hire. A big hustler in the city at the time wanted the person took care of and enlisted the help of Donnie to do it. The Bortley gang was feared and violently ran less than terrorists, the Poe Homes, back then. But of course they had rivals as well. Donnie went on the hit, him and another man ran down on the crew with Mac 11s. As he fired at one man, he ran up the street. The victim slipped and fell. As he ran down to finish the job, the man looked up in his eyes and asked Donnie why. At the time, it was only about drugs but Donnie didn't even know why for real. And that question would stay in his head for a long time. As police investigated the hits, no one would come forth. Despite the cold of the streets at the time, police eventually caught up to Donnie and others involved. Donnie got life in prison. He felt it was over, but he kept his head up and focused on first getting clean off of the smack and then finding God. While Donnie was locked up, David Simon, who helped work on the Baltimore Classics, The Corner, and The Wire. After meeting Fran Boyd, the mother of The Corner star, DeAndre McCullough, and hearing her story, he felt Donnie and her had a lot in common and linked the two via phone call. At the time, not knowing he was actually creating a love connection. Fran was clean and working hard at the time to help others get clean. So was Donnie. Fran and David were pushed to get Donnie out of prison. And after almost 18 years, he was a free man in 2005. Around about this time, The Wire was filming. And this was Donnie's first job, helping guide Omar in his mind and help him in the character, even appearing in some episodes himself. Two years later, Fran and Donnie would get married. They both continued working in the community, helping others. 
Donnie had a gang outreach and founded a non-profit organization called Why Murder, which reflected the last words of the man he hit. Unfortunately, in 2012, Mr. Andrews passed away from complications of a heart procedure. His impact in the city and story will live on. Back in the day, the corner boys used to run from him, saying, here he comes, here come Donnie, yo, to eventually run into him for help. Life sometimes comes back full circle. Rest in peace, Mr. Donnie Andrews, the real Omar. Man, rest in peace, big homie. You know, like, when I looked at this story and I read up on it, at first, I didn't even know Omar was a real character. But as I started doing my research into this series, into The Wire, I knew a lot of people was based on real individuals. But there was certain people, I was like, nah, they had to make yo up. Like, that ain't no real person. But when he came home, I know y'all know about The Corner. If you haven't already, go back and check out the DeAndre McCullough story. Well, his mother, Fran Boyd, that's who helped uh, Simon get him out of jail. And when he got out of prison, they got married. And I feel as though they that was dope because they was on the same mission in life. They both had came from a life where though they was getting high, they was in the streets to a life of helping others. So man, there's a lot of people from the city that changed their life around. So if you out there right now and you going through something and you got a situation and you don't know what tomorrow going to bring, just think about these stories, man. It's not impossible to change your life around. I know a lot of people personally that change their life around. And you know, some people would take longer than others. But man, with this story, when he came home, he was fortunate and blessed to be able to work on the wire, which that gave him motivation to do more things for the community, which he already was doing in prison. So he just brought that same energy home. And he had that outreach and he had the thing that was called um, the Why Murder Organization, which I feel as though that was deep because the man who he hit and went to prison for, when he looked up at him in his eyes and asked him why, he couldn't tell him. And that's the thing that I be trying to tell y'all, why? Like, why Why we doing this, you feel me? Like, at the end of the day, you know what I mean? It don't really be worth it. But that's a whole nother topic, man. But yeah, rest in peace, man. Um, he passed away, he was like, I believe 58 years old, if I'm not mistaken. And this was um 2012, you know, in France, she's still out here doing great work in the community. I'm gonna try to reach out to her and find her cause I would love to get an interview with her and hear her story, her real testimony. Cause I know she been through a lot too. But man, he was definitely a pillar in the community and he did a lot to help out, man. He was the voice of the streets. So yeah, man, this is another episode of the Baltimore Way. This the real Omar story, man. Salute, man, rest in peace, big brother. Be sure to like, comment, I'm out, man.